What up, YouTube family? Welcome to Symbolic Mind Generation. It's my second video today. I'm going to bring y'all. I had somebody come in and ask me to touch uh, touch more, go, go more in deep, uh, or more in depth of uh, me having a cartel as a plug. Uh, one day I get a call from one of the uh, one of the brothers in the cartel that I was dealing with. It was two brothers, and I had been kind of we had been kind of ducking them because we just felt like it was messy. The one brother that called me man had recently got his leg shot off by his people. So it's like they brought us into all kind of shit that they had going on already. So uh, they had a shipment coming in and we was really looking for, you know, we were really looking for finding us another plug to get out of this situation. And I think they kind of sensed that. So he made a statement or he said something to me in the form of, I'm going to see your daddy if you don't help me with this shipment. I say, what? He say, there's no in and out. It's easy this way. You got it. We got this shipment here just for you. And we can't find you. I was out here in Vegas, like hanging out, chilling. You know what I mean? Like really just done with the whole thing. I really was out. And that, that little statement there kind of put me back in. Now let me tell you something, right? When me and my brother 53 talk about what he said to me, we discussed what needed to be, to be done to them right on the phone. Come to find out, our phones were tapped during that time, during the threat against my family and what me and him discussed. We couldn't find a conversation with me and him nowhere, but we knew it was after that, after the threat, right? So what the feds did, they heard the threat and by law, they were supposed to come in and pick everybody up. Instead, they indicted me and charged me for everything that was done after that threat. This is what I'm trying to tell y'all, bro. Boy, I'm just like, that's what I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm just so tired of this, the way this country treat black folks, bro. You know what I mean? Because I feel like, man, if I wasn't, if I wasn't black, they would have came in and intervened into this investigation. I just feel that way. You know what I'm saying? And uh, they ain't cut me no break. They ain't offer me. You know what I mean? I went to we were doing the pretrial stages. They offered me 168 months and offered my, my brother 53, 20 years. He was telling me, man, go ahead and take it, man. You know what I'm saying? I was like, nah. It just wasn't right. I introduced him to the plug. So, uh, you know, I say, man, I just take what I got coming to me, man. You know what I mean? And whatever it is, what it is. I knew I was getting a life sentence. And I just took it. As far as man trying to I ain't have nobody to tell on. So you got the plug telling on me. You know what I mean? Like from the start, from the reverse thing, when I first got arrested, they brought the, you know, the DEA to my house. You know what I mean? But let me tell you something, bro. I was, I grew up a kid fantasizing about murder. I used to want to kill my mother's boyfriend, my little sister's father. And I love my little sister to death, you know what I'm saying? But many years ago, man, my, my, uh, my mother's boyfriend used to beat the brakes off my mother, man. And I couldn't whip him. I couldn't whip him. We was too young. So my mother used to always carry a 38 in her purse. And I used to like, man, I was just going to shoot him one day. I was just trying to figure out how to shoot him. How to kill, how to get rid of this man, get this man out of my mama's life. 
So as a young kid, man, I just fantasized about murder, murder, murder. I remember I was walking home from school one day and I seen a man getting shot. This was many years ago. The dude must have had like a little 22 or 25 or something because the dude was eating the, he was eating the, he was eating the bullets. But he had to shot him, he must have shot him at least three or four times. I remember this lady was telling me, hey, 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 keep walking, what are you doing? And maybe, I, I was just staring, I was just like, look, I was shot. You know what I mean? And I used to fantasize about somebody breaking in the house and getting like stuck in the window. I catch them coming through the window and just butcher their ass to death. That's what I used to, shit I used to think about. So when this dude tell me he gonna do this or he gonna kill my daddy, man, it was on and popping, bro. I, I just felt like, you know, I was, I was finally about to commit murder. You know what I mean? And I, it was easy. I didn't have no, no, no remorse thoughts about it or whatever. I was like ready. Like if they just go anywhere near, cause you, I gotta protect that. I got to. One day, man, I had owed him. I think my bill was like seventy thousand dollars. So I used to meet where I met him at, at the Mercury Lounge on the. Uh, on West 6th Street, up in Cleveland. And it was a large parking lot across the street where everybody used to park their cars at, and I used to park over there. And I used to meet them somewhere sometime because it was like a just a big parking lot, it was just busy, like you can pull up, you can handle your business, whatever. Connected to that parking lot, I can cut through the alley and go to the next street. And there was a little club over there called Club 75, like a little jazz club. So I'm meeting them. I'm telling them to meet me at the Mercury, but I'm not at the Mercury. I'm at Club 75. So when they call and tell me they're in the parking lot, I leave Club 75 and come back up and cut through the alley. My car was parked in the first row right on the rail right there. So I hop over the little thing and pop the trunk. I get the money out the, out the trunk and I see his, uh, his truck facing that way, like tilted a little bit facing, he looking at me, he waiting on me to come out the other spot. I ain't over there. I go to the driver's, I mean the passenger side door. It's another person in the car, right? So when I get closer up on the car, the other dude got his hand on, on the other brother, my, the dude that I'm meeting, not the one with the one leg, this is the other brother. He rubbing his thigh and shit. I'm like, what the? Like, you know what I mean? Like waiting on me, like they waiting on me to come out. He rubbing the dude's thigh like a baby, you know, like on some, you know. So when he rubbing the dude's thigh, he rubbing the dude I'm meeting, he rubbing his, uh, he rubbing the, the guy driving that I'm meeting, the pastor rubbing his thigh, his right thigh. He had on a jacket and every time he rubs up and down his thigh, his jacket right here would come open. You know, like move. So I'm, they don't even see me. I'm just standing there looking at this shit. And every time he rubs his thigh, I see a big ass badge on the inside of his coat. <sighs> Man, bro, <laughs> no. Dude, you know, that thing looking like, like one of those West uh, uh, Walker, Texas Ranger kind of joints. I don't know what that, that thing was big, man. So I'm like, what the? So I dropped the bag and raised my hands up like this, like I'm arrested, it's a setup. So they do, they turn around and see me. He rolled the window down like, oh, I already never met this dude before. He called me by my name. Oh, Kenny, man, it's cool, just put the bag in the car. So I put the bag in the car and put my hands down and, and walked off like, man, like they got the popo with them and everything. They connected. I heard a story later that that same dude, the, the, the Mexican dude, the, my plug, he was working for INS, setting up his own people for immigration. 
So he could have been sleeping with the immigration dude and told him what he was doing and all of that. And, and he probably was getting extorted or we need to get some of that money or whatever. So the other dude had got, had got his leg shot off. He was in the hospital at the time. But I had called him when I left there, like, hey, I dropped off that, you know, like, like we clean. I dropped off the 70. I don't owe you nothing. About two days later, he called me, told my own $70,000. I'm like, what? I said, man, I gave, that shit, I gave that shit to your brother and the other guy. He said, what other guy? What you talking about? But I, I kept talking, and guess what? Because he was sedated. He was sedated from his leg being, you know, shot off or whatever. But he remembered my conversation. He like, I remember you called me and told me that, that you dropped it. I remember now. But he never mentioned to me about this other dude with the badge. Never. Never brought it up again. They never gave him the money. They never gave him that money that I gave him. Because I was mainly dealing with him. I didn't deal with the other brother. He was more of the drop-off dude and the pickup. He wasn't in the, you know, the negotiation and all of that. He That wasn't him. So, uh, man, I, I'm telling you all this, this. I'm telling you all all this, man, because I found out if I would have went to the police and black like, man, these people threatening me, I would have never went to prison. But even though they were doing that, I still would have been a rat, I think. You know what I mean? But that's called duress. If you're under duress, you have to go turn yourself in. You got to make an attempt to go to authorities. You know what I mean? So if you're in a situation where somebody is, is threatening you to, you know, to continue to do something, you can go to the police right now and, and you can get out of that situation. But just to me, I just felt like I've met them. I've been made money with them. I've been dealing with them, even though they're on some bullshit right now. I just ain't, I ain't just going to just run. I just can't run to the police if they ain't got me yet. I just, that's just me. You know what I'm saying? And I just feel like, man, that's just, with the whole, I don't know what the, maybe that's, I feel like that's snitching. But that ain't, you know, they, was, they end up being some piece of shits. Coming there when I got arrested, they had ledgers with our names in it, dates and times that they gave the people, testified, lied about some shit. Everything was a kilo. Man, we, hey, y'all want to come up? We're going to the strip club tonight. That was a kilo. Hey, we're going down to shooters, man, and get you know some get some crab legs and eat on the water and stuff, and you know, and getting ride on the boat and stuff. No, that was five kilos. That's what the boat mean five. You know, just lying about shit, bro. Just lying about shit, man. You know what I'm saying? And man, it was just crazy. Then when I get in and find out that uh, uh, they was on the yards and shit, because I went to one of my counselors, and man, he did, he dug in deep for me, told me where they was at and everything. And I was like, damn. You know what I mean? But being in the penitentiary, man, you find out. You know what I mean? A lot of those those cartels and those and those different groups, it ain't snitching when you if you tell on black. So, you know what I mean? They, they not they can hit the yard or whatever. They, they, they got their five K one, got their reduction of their sentence. And, and who you tell on black? Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So this whole thing, man. And I don't know. I don't know where the hatred come from for black people, man. And you know what I'm saying. But I just think it's unfair because, man, we just the shit. You know, we didn't, man. We didn't. We, you know, we was brought over here, bro. And a lot of people would, would say I'm wrong about that, say we was already here. But, man, it's a known fact, though, that we was brought on some slave ships. It might have been a long, long time ago we was here and then we wasn't here no more. Then we was brought back over here, though. That's all I'm saying. And I was like, man, it just, it just, it just, it just pisses me off, bro. The, it just pisses me off that people can do. I just couldn't, man. The situation that I was in, the trouble that I was in, I'm talking about, man, I'm dealing with high blood pressure and shit like that. And I had an incident, man, this week, man, with my, I didn't talk to y'all about it, but shit, I was walking around about to die, bro. And I think I had like a little mini stroke. 
You know what I'm saying? It was like in my legs and shit, man. I couldn't, I couldn't walk. My legs had numbed up. Man, my blood pressure was like 200 over 160 or some shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, man, uh, and that all started from from this case. You know what I mean? And I ain't been taking care of myself and been out here on the grind trying to work and shit. And yeah, I got to work so many hours because the money just ain't the same now. It's like I'm working for them. You know what I mean? I ain't happy with myself and all of that. I did this video because somebody asked me to go more in depth about dealing with those people. You know what I mean? And uh, I want to let y'all know, yeah, it was threats on my family. <clears throat> you know what I mean? That's why the time that we did, me getting a life sentence and stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, I, didn't, I just felt like, man, I ain't, ain't no way I was supposed to get less time than my brother when I introduced him to the plug. And it all worked out. I ain't up beating him home. He get 20 years. I get life plus five. I beat him home. I always been highly favored, man. And man, I just been lucky a lot of times, man. I done hit so many numbers in my day. I just, I just, I just, God just, I just, I'm just highly favored, man. I'm just highly favored, man. I always just find my way out of shit. And uh, my brother always told me, like, man, you can hit a, you can hit a half court at the brother all the time, man. Like, how you do it? How you pull it out? I just, I just find a way to make it happen, man. But right now, man, I, uh, my other video that I put out today, that's my GoFundMe video. Man, I need y'all to hit me, man. I'm going through something. It's a rough time for me right now. And I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. I went to my wife, like, man, I need to give me like a. This was like a. a a few months back, like man, like I need to get me like a pound of weed or something, and just try to bang it just for some extra little cash. And she cussed me out and called me stupid and shit. And I'm like, it ain't nothing but a pound. You know what I mean? We illegal out here, man. I can find me three, four people. A lot of people don't like going to the dispensary. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me just, you know, like, you know, that's how I was thinking. But I'm so glad, man. I want y'all to know I'm healed, man. Because no matter what I'm going through financially, man, I ain't thinking about picking up nothing. I got a family now. I think if I was by myself, I probably would have been in, at least, you know, grabbing me a little weed or stuff. You know what I'm saying? But now, man, let me tell y'all something, man. I am totally healed, man. I'm totally healed. All I got to do now is get myself together, man, find me a direction, like a career direction. And, uh... Get these books out that I want to stuff. Man, I created a movie trivia show. I got about three novels, man, on deck. You know what I mean? And uh, I had an e-commerce, like, you know, T-shirt design. You know what I mean? I got a store on Etsy, man. It ain't been getting no traffic. And I got to re, uh, I gotta go in there and revamp that. It's, it's under Symbolic Minds also. But you can't order now. I was, go I was getting the T-shirts made through Printful in my Shopify store. So I'm going to rebuild all of that. Man, I need y'all to hit me, man. Anybody want to invest in me, I need y'all to invest in me, man. You know, hit me up, man, on the email or whatever. That's KenupStover7, the number seven at Gmail. Man, man you want to invest in me, man. I got a lot of things going on. If you somebody, man, who looking to just to, for somebody, you know, to put something into, man, I need y'all to hit me up. And uh, I got a lot of ideas. I got scatterbrain. I'll be over here and be over there instead of staying here until I get that done, then staying here until I get that done. So, uh, man, that's what happened with these with these Mexicans, man. And if you're in a situation like that, listen, man, never, man, let them people know who your people is. I advise you not to even never give your real name. You know what I'm saying? Never give your real name. Your house that you meeting at or, or they dropping the stuff off to, that ain't your house for real. You know what I mean? How you little, little fake trap house or something, man. Everything is uh, you undercover when you're dealing with them people, for real, for real. You No names, no family members, none of that shit, bro. None of that. You know what I mean? And uh, that situation there, man, 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 it just like, I just couldn't, I could never do, I could, I ain't built like that. I ain't built like them. That situation I was in and the trouble I was in, I couldn't imagine me doing that to somebody else. 
saying you ain't never getting out of jail. I, I just, I didn't, cause I can't do my time. I'm gonna I'm take you away from your family and your kids and all your people. Cause I can't do my time. I just ain't never been built like that. And I, I would never, never, that just ain't me. You know what I mean? Go on, hit that like button for me, hit that subscribe button, share this video, this symbolic mind generation.